In this episode, we're going to talk about how I attract hummingbirds to my backyard, and we're going to do the raw edit of this beautiful image. Hello amigos, I'm Pablo Garcia, the engineer photographer. This summer, I've been enjoying photographing hummingbirds. I see more activity in my backyard. And back in July, I got the new Canon R7 camera and I coupled it with the RF 100-500 millimeter lens. And typically, I'm using it around 400 or even 500 millimeters. Now, how do I get more hummingbirds into my backyard and how do I edit those images? So let's talk about that. To attract hummingbirds to my backyard, I actually started last year, spring of last year. I planted a number of plants that attract hummingbirds. I did a little bit of research, talked with a number of people, and I selected a number of plants that were available. Now, these plants flower at different times during the year, some late spring, some during early summer, some during late summer. You only see four here, but I probably have at least another four in this part of my yard. In addition, I have two different feeders. Here I have this feeder. I see a lot of activity from the hummingbirds coming to the plant, especially now late summer, coming to this Mexican firebush. And in another part of my yard, I have another feeder. This feeder has better light during the morning. In addition, I put a little branch, a little perch, uh, for the hammers to come in and sit there. Now, how far am I from the feeders? Usually about 8 to 10 feet away. Uh, that's where I'm at. You know, the, the hummingbirds will get used to you if you move slowly. And the other thing that is important is to pay attention to your backgrounds. And in this case, you can see some plants right there on the fence. This one allows me to get kind of some greenery, some gray behind, and it's going to be completely blurry because I'm going to be shooting around 6.3 or f 671 Depending on the angle where I'm shooting at, I'm going to get more green or less green on the background. You just have to change the nectar every couple of days, keep the feeders clean, and I go and cut flowers from the plants that you just saw. I put the flowers right here on the hole. I cover some of the other holes with masking tape, and then I shoot for about 10, 15 minutes when I see some hummingbird activity. I give him a break. I remove the tape. I want the hummingbirds to keep coming to my feeder, and then I repeat. And the hummingbirds are going to be more active early in the morning and late in the afternoon. I still see them during midday, but not as much. So early morning hours, for me, that tends to be 7.30 to 9 o'clock in the morning or late afternoon. Now, what kind of images am I able to get? Well, here you have this example of this hummingbird in flight. If you want to get the wing somewhat uh, frozen, you need to be at a high uh, speed. And that usually is going to be this image was taken at 1 1600th of a second. And you can still see a little blur on the wing. If you want to really freeze the wing, you need to be over two, 1 2000th of a second. 3000 or even 5000 and for that you're either going to be needing a lot of light or higher iso on your camera here is another image you can adjust the angle of the flower and by adjusting the angle of the flower the opening of the flower you can also change the direction of flight of the hummingbird as they approach the flower in what pose they're presenting to you in this case, it's coming straight at me, and I think it's a, a little different uh, pose for this image. Here you have more of a side pose. Here is another one with a Mexican firebush flower. And the trick is to use the flowers that you already have in your garden, because hummingbirds are used to those flowers. Here you have another one. I had angled the flower down a bit, and the hummingbird is kind of reaching for it. Now, they're also using the perch. Here you have this beautiful hummingbird, a Rufus hummingbird, just sitting on the perch. And today, we're going to talk about how I edited this image. This morning, when I took this image, it was, I think, three days ago, it was wet and rainy. And the hummingbirds actually were spending a lot of time on the perch, trying to stay away from the water drops. Now, this image was taken at 
one sixteen hundred of a second at ISO 6400. As I told you, it was a little cloudy, so not a lot of light. I was really set up to do birds in flight. I don't necessarily needed one sixteen hundred of a second for a perch bird, but that's what I was set up to do. And I was at 500 millimeters. And if we look at the raw file, I'm going to zoom in. So here we are. You can actually see quite a bit of noise on this image. And that's, you know, a 6400 ISO, you expect to see noise. The bird is in focus, but we need to be able to deal with noise. One problem you use Lightroom is we know reducing noise in Lightroom is not the strongest capability that Lightroom has. If you have low to moderate noise, you know, you're shooting at ISO 400, 600, 1000, even 2000, you can deal with the noise in Lightroom effectively. But once you start going higher, in order to remove the noise, you're going to remove a lot of detail. And I don't want to lose the detail on the bird. So let's assume I'm using Lightroom. I go to the develop module. I go to the detail panel and I'm just going to crank up the noise, luminal noise reduction. And you can see the noise going away. You can still see noise there. I'm already at around 50 points. You can steal some noise. I need to go higher. But what ends up happening is, I'm going to zoom in. Look at the detail on the bird. I'm going to go to the before. You see the detail on the feathers, but noisy background. And now the noise in the background has mostly gone away, not completely, but I lost a lot of the detail on the feathers. And if I crank it up a bit more, now I have a very nice background but I lost a lot of the detail on the bird. So Lightroom actually needs some help. And the help is through some of the plugins. And there are a number of plugins we can use today. You know, Topazi Noise AI has been a great plugin. I like it because it has a lot of capabilities and gives you a lot of manual control, you know, even though it uses artificial intelligence. Lately, I've been using DxO Pure Raw 2. I think it does a great job with raw files. And that's what we're going to use for this image. I'm going to reset it. And I did a, a complete review of the XO Pure Raw 2 some time ago. And you're going to find it here. How do I go to Pure Raw 2? I go to File, Plugin Extras, Process with the XO Pure Raw 2. The script that comes with the XO Pure Raw 2 as a plugin is going to take the raw file and send it directly to pure raw and it selected the deep prime method which is the best artificial intelligence method that is within this tool you can also have the choice of doing optical corrections and actually dxo is a company that for many many years has done testing on cameras and lenses and i think their optical corrections are as good or even better than what adobe does so I usually, if I use this tool, I'm going to have optical corrections enabled. The only trick is if you have Lightroom configured to automatically do optical corrections, you have to remember to disable that when this file comes back into Lightroom. And it gives me the choice to either do JPEG or DNG. We know DNG retains, basically is another raw format. It retains a lot of the characteristics, original raw file, but it's going to have all the noise gone and it's going to preserve a lot of detail. We just say process, <laughs> you know, the Pure Raw 2 works really good, but it doesn't give you a lot of controls. It says it's going to take another five or six seconds. When the process is going to come back into Lightroom, it's going to add it under a DxO subfolder in your main folder. It also is going to add it to a DxO collection with the date. And we're done. So here is the file that came back. I'm going to add it to the collection that I'm working on for this video. I already had that set as a targeted collection, so I'm going to hit the letter B. And that adds it to my target collection. And now let's compare the noise. We haven't done any edits. So I'm going to select more images. The letter C gives me to the compare view. I'm going to zoom in. And here you can see. On the right, we have the original raw image. You see all the noise. And on the left, we have the image that just came in from DxO. Where 
the great majority of the noise, there's still a little bit, but I, I think, you know, once you whistle them out, you're not going to see it. And I retain a lot of the detail on the bird. And this is the image that now is going to be the foundation for our edits. So here is the image. And I think the best thing for this image, you know, something like a four by five crop, something like that. I am like to turn the lights off in Lightroom with the letter L, hitting it twice. I'm going to come in a little bit smaller. I want to have more room in the direction that the bird is looking at than behind them, you know, something like that. I think it's going to look quite well. I'm going to do some basic global adjustments. I'm going to reduce the highlights a bit. I don't want to do anything with the shadows. Reduce the whites a bit to get a little more detail on the feathers. And just bring the blacks a bit. Not much. I'm really going to be using the power of masking in Lightroom. I go to the masking. I'm going to select subject and the tool for select subject continues to improve and it did a great job. So here we are. It selected the bird. It left a little bit of the branch unselected so we can add it. I'm going to add it to the brush. I'm going to make the brush really small and I'm going to have auto mask turn on and I'm going to add the brush. There we have the mask, you know, did a really nice job. Now, what do I want to do with the bird? Well, I want to make it pop. Now, to do that, I'm going to increase exposure a bit. I'm going to reduce the whites, try to get a little more detail on the feathers because they're very bright. I'm going to increase the blacks a bit. And to get detail into the feathers, I'm going to increase texture, texture, you know, brings again the texture on the feathers. I'm going to increase clarity a bit. Now, clarity, you go way overboard, uh, is not going to look correct. So you just want a little bit of clarity for additional detail. I'm going to increase saturation. I want those oranges and greens on the bird to pop a little bit more. And now with the space key, I'm going to hit on the eye. And what I want to do is do sharpness and I'm going to increase the sharpness and sharpness is better evaluated at hundred percent. You don't want to go too much, something like that. Now the image is already looking so much better. What else can we do? Well, I like the background, you know, the background is not solid green, you know, there are different shades. What I don't like is this area right here is quite a bit brighter and it's also near the corner. So my eyes continue to get attracted towards that part of the image. So we're going to deal with it. What we're going to do is make the image smaller on the screen. So we're going to use control minus and make the image really small. I hit control minus a couple of times. I'm going to go to masking. I'm going to create a new mask with a brush. I'm going to remove auto mask. I'm going to make sure I have a feather of a hundred percent and I'm going to make a big brush. I'm going to paint outside the image because I basically only want the feather portion of the brush to affect this part of the image. So I'm just going to draw something like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce exposure a bit. I'm going to reduce the highlights. I'm going to increase the temperature. I'm going to make it a little warmer and the tint. I'm going to make it a little greener. Okay. I'm just trying to blend that area a little bit more. So if I turn it off, that was before and this is after. You can see the changes. It just tries to blend it with the rest of the image a little bit more. So now we're done. I'm going to go back to 100%. You can use Control Plus. What do you think of this image? Are we done? Well, 
you can say that we're done. But the bird is looking from right to left. But those of us that live in the Western world, Europe, the Americas, we grow up looking at things that flow the other direction, from left to right. You know, when we learn to read, when we write, everything is from left to right. And everything around us, usually things flow from left to right. I'm going to make a virtual copy of this image, so create virtual copy. And then I'm going to go under photo, flip horizontal. And now it's going to look like that. Now, here is the original image. Here is the flip image. Original and flip. Which one do you like better? For me, I prefer this one. So this was the final touch that I did today. Well, amigos, that's all for today. I hope you liked the discussion about hummingbirds and the edit of this image. I'm going to leave you here with this video I did on how to prepare your files to send it to Topaz in Noise AI. I did it some time ago, but it's still very relevant today. And don't forget to subscribe, send me your comments, give me a thumbs up, tell your friends about the channel, and I'll see you next time.